I'm here with Benjamin's Box Part 10, and we're going to finish the whole book today. Okay, Part 10. Look, that picture goes with our story for today, and it matches the picture on the front, right? There's Benjamin with his treasure box sitting somewhere surrounded by his friends. And there he is. Looks like he might be sitting on the steps to the temple. I think that's where he is. Let's read the story. This one is called He is Risen. During the next few days, Benjamin and Eli listened as the disciples shared about how Jesus had appeared to them in various places. The disciples are Jesus' closest friends and followers. They were the people who traveled around with him and learned from him. Disciple means someone who learns. Okay, so during the next few days, Benjamin and Eli listened as the disciples shared about G how Jesus had appeared to them in various places. Lots of places Jesus was showing up. People really saw him. They could, they could see for sure that he was alive. Jesus said that all this came to pass just so forgiveness could be preached to all nations, all people everywhere, beginning right here in Jerusalem, explained a disciple. He said that since we saw all these things, now we can go out and tell others the good news of his forgiveness. Benjamin smiled. Now he understood that Jesus had forgiven him too. And Benjamin wanted to share the good news. He ran home and got his treasure box and went out into the streets and gathered all of his friends. Inside this box, he explained, is a great treasure. The children drew closer and listened with excitement. And one by one, Benjamin took out each item. He explained how he got it and what it all meant. And so you see, he said, as he closed the box and looked into their faces, the treasure is really Jesus. Because what Jesus did on the cross, we can all be forgiven by God the Father. They all cheered and begged him to tell the story again because it is, is the good, good story. This page just says, thank you. Look, there's Benjamin with his box and he's praying. That night, Benjamin opened his box one more time before he went to bed. He examined each item, handling them all with love and care. Finally, he placed the last one back in the box. Then he knelt down and prayed. Kneeling means getting on your knees. It's a traditional way of praying. You don't have to kneel to pray, but sometimes it can be nice. It can help you remember that you're talking to God. Dear God, thank you for letting me find all these special treasures. But most of all, I thank you for sending me the greatest treasure of all. Thank you for sending Jesus and help me to be a good servant for Jesus. Help me to tell everyone I know about the good news. Amen. Okay, so I have a box like Benjamin's box, right? And maybe you've been making one too. So let's see if we remember all the things that we've put in the box and what they tell us about. So inside my box, it almost looks like a bird's nest because I have this stuff. I have lots of this stuff to remind me of the hay that was in the manger when baby Jesus was born. According to this story, Benjamin's grandfather was a shepherd and he came to see baby Jesus when he was still a baby. I think the next thing we put in here was this little toy. It's really a toy baby horse, but we put it in here to remind us that Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a baby donkey, and a baby donkey meant that he came in peace. If he'd come on a big, strong horse, it would have sent the people a very different message about what kind of king he was, right? But he rode on a baby donkey to say he came in peace. And let's see, after that, we put in the coin. because the leaders who didn't like Jesus paid money to Judas Iscariot to betray Jesus, to tell them where they could find him so they could arrest him. Here we have a cup, because at the Last Supper, the last time Jesus got to eat dinner, he, he broke the bread and said, this is my body broken for you. 
and he gave them all a drink from a cup and said, this is my blood poured out for you. And so when we eat the bread and drink the wine, like some of us do in church for communion, we're remembering Jesus, that he died for us. Let's see. After the cup, we have some of the sad, sad parts, right? We have the whip because they whipped him. Whew. We have... Uh, hmm. My thorn is getting mixed in with my straw. We have... The thorns, I'm trying to hold it up there. There we go. We have the thorns because they've made a crown of thorns for him. We have the nail because they nailed him to the cross. We have a die because they gambled. They rolled the dice to see who got to keep his clothes. We have a white cloth because they wrapped his body in the cloth to put it in the tomb. So many sad things. But then, we know he came back to life. It's funny, if you buy the resurrection eggs, all of these things are hidden inside little plastic eggs. And the last egg is empty, right? It's empty because the tomb was empty. The last thing I put in my box was a little rock, which I'm also losing in all the hay. I just put that little rock in here. Here it is. Because the big stone was rolled away the big, big stone that covered the door to the tomb where they put Jesus' body was rolled away by an angel, and Jesus was alive. Okay, and Benjamin made a box like this so he could tell his friends, and maybe now you can tell people about Jesus, because if we believe in Jesus and place our trust in him, if we really know in our hearts that he's alive, we can pray to him and ask him into our hearts, and he'll live with us forever. It's the best news there is. I hope you enjoyed Benjamin's box. I love you. I will talk to you tomorrow in Friday's video. Okay, bye-bye.